idea how many messages I've been getting. My uh, sweet Jenny will read me a few and different members of the family come up and read me one here, one there. And you know what? They made me just feel great until yesterday. Yesterday we made a decision. Today is the day that I'm supposed to go home. It's the day I've been aiming at for three weeks. And uh, I'm a pusher. And I've been marshalling all my emotional, all my physical, even my even my spiritual energy towards getting to today so I could go home. to sit on the couch with Jenny and watch a movie. I yearn for home. With absolutely every fiber of my being, I want to be in the place where my grandchildren can easily come visit me. I want to look out the back window and see that familiar old oak tree. But the decision was that it would be best for me, certainly not today, but in the long run, be best for Jenny, that I stay here for another week and a little bit more. And you know what, this hero, I'm only saying that because some people have been treating me that way. I just could hardly face it. I'm telling you, I just felt the tank was dry. Now, I, I want you to understand, I, I haven't considered anything, but when I wondered if that thing had hit me just a tiny bit harder in the head, I wouldn't have to be struggling through this pain. Jenny wouldn't have to be worried about getting the house ready with all the carpets taped down and building a ramp in the garage and a, and a railing on the two front steps coming in. And then I realized that that's exactly the lie that everybody tends to fall into, that the ideal life is the easy life. It isn't so. In fact, it says in Hebrews that a, a child who isn't disciplined, and, and we're not talking about you do something naughty and you get disciplined, we're talking about the discipline of going through physical therapy and occupational therapy. And I wish I didn't believe it because I so badly want to go home. It says the, the child who isn't, who isn't pushed to persevere is illegitimate because true parents want what's best for their children and God wants what's best for us. And what's best for us can only be learned through pain. And that's not something I came to recently. I wrote that in my Bible when I was just a teenager. As I observed life, that the only sure way to maturity is through pain. Christmas is almost here, at least it feels like Christmas. I remember when I was a kid waiting even even that last day before Christmas Eve and we could open our presents. Well, that's how it feels at 61 to be getting ready to go home. There's been a lot of nice people here that have done all sorts of unmentionable things for me that I couldn't do for myself while I was here. And I'm very, very appreciative of that. And 
and I just keep hearing that there are hundreds of people praying for me. And I'm deeply, deeply appreciative of that too. Let's not take for granted those blessings that we have. It's too bad that we're so soon old and so late smart that it seems that the only way that we can appreciate the things that we have is when they're taken away from us. I'm embarrassed to say that that has been true for me in this experience and I'm sure may continue to be true. But, but whatever else we do, let's not forget that the most loving and kind thing that we can do for people that are in need, like I am, is to help show them how to, how to do things for themselves and then let them do, let them even struggle to do what they can for themselves. I've been told over and over, and I've probably already mentioned it, that they say that people that come in here with big families that visit them often usually leave uh, with less capacity than people that come in here alone. You know why? Because the families come in and they can't help but doing for their loved ones what they see their loved ones struggling to do for themselves. That isn't compassionate in the long run. The other thing that I would ask, and I ask this of myself, is that we not lose compassion, true compassion, for those people in most of the world that could never have had the kind of resources and help that I have had during the six weeks, seven weeks now that I've been in the hospital and recuperating here in the uh, rehab hospital. Thank you again for praying. I appreciate that so much. It's so humbling to receive hundreds and hundreds of cards that must represent thousands of people who've been praying for me. And I just wonder why I should merit all that. But I thank you for it. And I can't wait to get home. I hope you get to see me walk through the doors of my house. There's no place like home. I guarantee you, there's no place like home. What if we go home?